Welcome to our discussion on tracheostomy tubes and tracheostomy care. A tracheostomy is a surgical opening that is made directly into the trachea to establish an airway. A tracheostomy tube is then inserted into the opening and attached to the mechanical ventilator for respiratory support. A tracheostomy can be either temporary or permanent and we have various types of tracheostomy tubes ranging from double lumen tubes, single lumen tubes and fenestrated tubes. When differentiating a double lumen and single lumen tube, a double lumen tracheostomy tube has an inner tube within the outer tube, while a single lumen has just one tube. Looking at the double lumen tracheostomy tube, we have various parts, just like it appears on this image on the left side. We have an outer cannula, which fits into the trauma of the tracheostomy and keeps the airway open. We have a faceplate indicating the size and the type of tube and this faceplate has two holes on both sides for securing the tube into the tracheostomy. We have another part known as the inner cannula and the inner cannula fits snugly into the outer cannula locking it into place and this inner cannula provides the universal adapter for use with a mechanical ventilator or any other respiratory support equipment. It can be removed, cleaned and reused. An obturator is a stylet with a smooth end that is used to facilitate the direction of the tube when you are inserting it or when you are changing a tracheostomy tube. This obturator is removed immediately after the tube placement and is always kept by the gland side or at the bedside in case of an accidental decannulation. Another part of a tracheostomy tube is a cuff, which when inflated seals the airway. And this curved tube is used for mechanical ventilation, preventing aspiration of oral or gastric secretions, and for clients who are receiving tube feeding to prevent any aspect of aspiration. And lastly, we have a pilot balloon which is attached to the outside of the tube, indicating the presence or an absence of air in the cuff. The other type of a tracheostomy tube is a single lumen tracheostomy tube, which is similar to the double lumen, except that there is no inner cannula here. When using a single lumen tracheostomy tube, more intensive nursing care is required because there is no inner cannula to ensure this lumen is patent. Then we have a fenestrated tube which has a pre-cut opening on the upper posterior wall of the outer cannula and the tube is used to wean the gland from the tracheostomy by ensuring that the gland can tolerate when breathing through their natural airway before the entire tube is removed. A fenestrated tube allows the gland to speak as well. We have another one that is a curved fenestrated tube and this curved fenestrated tube facilitates mechanical ventilation and speech and often it is used in clients who have spinal cord paralysis or who have a neuromuscular disease who and do not require mechanical ventilation at all times. When using a fenestrated tube and a client is not on the ventilator, this client can leave can have the cuff deflated and the tube capped for speech. A cuff fenestrated tube is never used for weaning from a tracheostomy because the cuff, even fully deflated, may be partially obstructing the airway. And then lastly, looking at the interventions that are performed in patients who have tracheostomy tubes in place. You need to assess the respirations for bilateral breath sounds, Monitor the arterial blood gases and pulse oximetry. Encourage coughing and deep breathing exercises. Maintain these patients in a semi folus or high folus position. And monitor for any bleeding, difficulty with breathing, absence of breath sounds and crepitus, which are indications of an hemorrhage or a development of a pneumothorax. You need to as well provide respiratory treatments as prescribed 
suctioning as needed. And remember, during suctioning, you need to hypoxygenate the gland before suctioning itself. If the gland is allowed to eat, sit the gland up for meals and ensure that the calf is inflated for meals and for one hour after meals to prevent any incidence of aspiration. Monitor the calf pressures as prescribed by your healthcare provider and your policy in the institution. Assess the stoma and secretions for blood or purine discharge from the tracheostomy site. Administer humidified oxygen as prescribed because in this case of tracheostomy tube placement, the normal humidification process is bypassed. You need to obtain assistance in changing the tracheostomy ties and after placing the new ties, cut and remove the old ties, holding the tracheostomy in place. Keep a resuscitation bag or an ambu bag by your side, an obturator, clamps and a spare tracheostomy tube in case of an emergency. And it's important to remember that you're not supposed to insert a plug or to cap a tracheostomy tube until the curve is deflated and the inner cannula is removed.